Welcome back. Today's lesson will be another in the Security Basics series, and we're going to look at Cisco IOS Resilient Configuration. First things first, let's get a definition of what uh, Cisco IOS Resilient Configuration is. What it's meant to do is it's meant to uh, minimize downtime. So in the case that you have a router that's gone kaput, um, say the flash has been corrupted, so now trying to rebuild that router, you have to get a copy of the IOS thrown on there, then you have to go find a configuration Put that push that out to that router somehow. What Cisco IOS Resilient Configuration does, and it's actually a combination of a couple of commands that make up this feature. I'll just read this actually because this is a very good description of what it does. The Cisco IOS Resilient Configuration feature is intended to speed up the recovery process. The feature maintains a secure working copy of the router image and the startup configuration at all times. These secure files cannot be removed by the user. This set of image and router running configuration is referred to as the primary boot set. As I mentioned earlier, Cisco IOS Resilient Configuration is composed of two IOS Global Configuration commands, and they are Secure Boot Image and Secure Boot Config. And the Secure Boot Image, what that's going to do is it's going to take an IOS image and it's going to save it to a local disk. And when I say local disk, I'm going to use Flash from now on. Uh, but keep in mind, this could be like your disk zero, disk one, depending on your platform and setup. Anyways, it's going to take that IOS image and it's going to store it to Flash in such a way that it's basically uncorruptible and that you can't delete it, uh, you, you can't really mess it up. Actually what we'll do later, and this is pretty cool, if we're going to go ahead and format the flash card, you know, wipe everything out, and we'll see that that secure boot image uh, stays there. It doesn't, it doesn't get wiped out with the format. The other very cool part of this feature is that it doesn't take up much space, so it, it takes up, I think, just a little bit more minimal, minimal amount more space than what, what is um, currently being used by the non-secured boot image, if you will, the uh, non-secured iOS image, rather. Secure Boot Config is going to work in much the same way. What's going to happen is when you enable this command, it's going to take the current running configuration at the time that you enable that command. That's kind of important. We'll touch on that a little bit more later. It's going to take the running configuration and it's actually going to write it to Flash. You're not going to see the file. You're not going to have a file, you know, a .cfg file or something that you can see in the Flash, but it's going to be there. And what this is good for is say that you, uh, your router gets boned up or you, you do a, a write erase and blow everything away, you can quickly restore this. It's going to actually be in the flash, like I said, though you won't be able to see it. The router will be able to bring this back to life and you'll be able to slap this on your startup configuration and be good to go. And the verification command for this is going to be show secure boot set and we'll get pretty deep into that as well. So this slide captures some of the aspects and um, important considerations of Cisco IOS resilient configuration. The first bullet here says the configuration file in the primary boot set is a copy of the running configuration that was in the router when the feature was first enabled. And what that's pointing out is that when you enable the secure boot config command in global configuration mode. It's going to take a copy of the current running configuration at that time and it's going to secure that to your flash card. And what you have to keep in mind here is this secure boot config. This is not going to change. So if you, um, for instance, write your configuration, you do a copy run start, that changes to the startup configuration are not going to be reflected in this secure copy of the uh, configuration that's in Flash. So you have to keep that in mind. You can certainly update the secure boot config when you make changes or what a lot of people do with this with this feature is they just have like a basically a baseline something that they absolutely need to have on there and it's good for you know rollback too if you completely fucker your image you have a known working image that's on the um, flash and maybe that's uh, a good analogy with Windows the known good config maybe make this your known good config but uh, just keep in mind that this is not changing it's not updating when you update your running or startup configuration you have to do that uh, manually and we'll show you how to do that and this next bullet just reiterates what I said earlier it, this doesn't take up much space when you're talking about the um, config secure boot con I'm sorry secure boot image doesn't take up much space. It's a little bit more. We'll see that on the uh, command line. The feature automatically detects image and configuration version mismatches, mismatches, mismatches. <laughs> you got the gist of that. Pardon my mush mouth. Uh, we'll take a look at that, the CLI as well. Okay, this is kind of important depending on how you have your um, network set up. Only local storage is used for securing files, blah, 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 blah. Basically what it's saying is you're getting your config from a TFTP server, some outside source that's not local to your device. 
this is not going to work. And that's the reason why on this um, lesson we're going to actually be using real equipment. We're going to be using a, you don't remember if it's 28, 11 or 2845, but because of the way that, that Dynamips is set up, it, it generally gets, well, I guess we could change this, but Dynamips will grab its iOS from your, your local box, from your local computer, so it's not having to save that into virtual memory. And just one second here, I'll pull that up. Okay, and this is um, R1 is a virtual instance of a router running in Dynamips. And if we do a show version and we include the system image in iOS, you can say that this is running 12.4, 15, blah, blah, blah. But it's getting that from this uh, TFTP source, which basically is just Dynamips' way of going out to a folder that you've specified on your PC, loading that to the virtual router when it boots up so that it's not having to save this in some type of a virtual flash. So for that reason, I, I'm sure there's a way to, you know, don't email me saying, oh, I know how to do this. Or, well, you can. I Actually, I would probably like to know how to do this. But it's just easier for me to use real equipment, especially when we're going to be doing stuff like um, formatting the uh, flash drive. And so now this final one, then you can guess, it's in red and bold. This feature can be disabled only through a console session, and we'll go over that. But keep this in mind, that there are going to be some things, some operations with this feature that you're only going to be able to do through a console session. So unless you have, you know, a monkey at site with a you know, cable into the console port, or you have some type of um, remote access through the console port, some things you're going to have to do locally or through that remote access through the console port. You will not be able to do this through a, a Telnet session or an SSH or some type of VTY connection. That That is important to keep in mind, especially when you're planning, um, if you're using this for some type of minimal disaster recovery plan, to keep this point in mind. Okay, and this specifies some restrictions for Cisco IOS resilient configuration. This feature is available only on platforms that support I'm not going to read all that. PCMCIA ATA disk. Basically, just read that as flash. Um, there must be enough space on the storage device to accommodate at least one Cisco IOS image, two for upgrades, and a copy of the running configuration. That makes sense. Like I alluded to earlier, this feature doesn't take up much space, so if you can fit those on now, you should be good to go to use this feature. iOS file system support, blah blah blah, is also needed. Basically, the router is going to tell you if you're going to be able to use this or not. And let me pull up that. Okay, this is our uh, R1 that's running in Dynamips. If I try to issue this secure boot config, if I can spell it correctly, command hit enter, it's going to tell me no. It looks at first <laughs> deceivingly like it was going to take it, but it will give you an error message. It's basically saying no ATA disk found. This is a quick and dirty way to figure out if your device has the ability to support this command. Do keep in mind that if you're doing this to a remote device, if this device does support the secure boot config, you've just enabled it by issuing that command. And in order to unenable it, <laughs> for lack of a better term, you will have to access it via the console port. So probably something you want to do before you ship equipment out or you know do from a console line. Okay, so let's get rid of this. It may be possible to force removal of secure files from an older version of Cisco iOS software that does not contain file system support for hidden files. I'd like I told you earlier that the um, secure boot config is, you're not going to see that. It's going to be a hidden file and we'll see all this on the CLI, but this might be something you want to keep in mind for the test and for the real world that if you're not using um, up-to-date iOS that it's possible for older iOS versions to see and to remove these files. Just keep that in mind. Uh, this feature can be, this is an important one, this is very important. Okay, this feature can be disabled only by using a console connection to the router. This is very important. We touched on that just a minute ago. So, I mean, you always have to keep that in mind. With the exception of the upgrade scenario, feature activation does not require console access. So that's kind of the uh, the double-edged sword right there. You can, you can go ahead and VTY to a remote device, enable this feature, but in order to uh, get the benefit of it or to turn it off, you will have to be on the console rather than through a VTY connection. Okay, and this is just reiterating that you know you have to have local files for this to work. You can't be getting files from over the network. And this last one we'll go over on the CLI, but it's it's telling you that you're not going to be able to see these files uh, in Rommon. You can, and we'll look at that. But in order to see, you know, to verify that this is working, you're going to want to use show secure boot set command to verify.